Today, we start this podcast edition with the Almoravid and Almohads in Brent in Andalusia. Within our approach to Islamic culture, on this website, we have offered the root of this caliphate. On this route, we discover the art, culture, knowledge, and knowledge of Islamic culture at the time of greatest splendor in the Iberian Peninsula. With the Caliphate of Cordoba, the culminating point of Islamic culture of And Al Andalus was reached. This state finally collapsed due to the internal confrontations between Caliph, Caudillo, and other parties of that they craved the power. The period of the Taifa kingdoms would begin until the arrival of the North African empires, Almohads and Almoravids. These two empires left their culture mark through Thug Andalusia. However, before speaking about the architecture and the remains that we can visit today, we will give an introduction to these two Islamic empires of North Africa. After the fall of the Caliphate of Cordoba, the arrival of the Taifa kingdoms and later the expansion of the conquest of the Christian kingdoms in the Iberian Peninsula, such as the fall of Toledo in 1085 by Alfonso VI, the end of the 10th century and the beginning of the 11th century was a phenomenon in many parts of the Islamic world, was the appearance of ribats, monasteries fortress used as a defense against an enemy, and inhabited by holy men and soldiers with a pious life inside the monastery, and as a warrior outside for the protection of Islam. It was the case that while in the very peninsula the Taifax Kingdom appeared, Syria Kingdom of Granada 1013, Kingdom of Seville, Kingdom of Zaragoza, etc. On the coasts of Mauritania in the Sahel zone, this rivet exists in their struggle against the black tribes in addition to combat them. At this time, a Berber tribe finally subdued that area, created an state and extended north to the Maghreb, and established its capital in Marrakesh. Its first leader was Imtash Fur, and promulgated an hostile Islam against luxuries and withdrawing fundamentalism. In the Iberian Peninsula, the Taifa kingdoms increasingly submit to the Christians and, having lots of some battles, ask for the help to the new African Empire, which, to see how the leaders of Taifa kings had abandoned the conservative customs and thrown to the pleasures, decide to make a double holy war first against the Christian kings and second against the Taifa kings. This rise of the Almoravids finally annexed the Taifa kingdoms and fought against the Christians. The Taifa kings were deposed and some cases such as the Taifa king of Seville al Mutamid were deposed in lamentable conditions, giving the final disastrous call of King al-Mutamid. 
has said the recently deceased civilian historian Jose Maria de Vera. A pity, since, since the Almutamid court was a real representation of what had been the Caliphate court, culturally, socially, and scientifically speaking. The Almoravids did not take long to abandon their fundamentalism custom and relax in their sense, although they never enjoyed popular support. In fact, there were several popular Berber revolts, which resulted in the expulsion and the creation of the second independent Taifa Kingdom for a period of about 30 years. In North Africa, things were not there. As a sedentary Berber tribe of the Atlas Mountains proclaimed a kind of holy war against the Almoravids and in their hands of their leader, Ibn Tumar, an ultra-fundamentalist who was again the modest dress the profane music, the excessive ornamentation of the mosques, and the luxury to which the Almoravids had fallen. Helped by his lieutenant Abd al marmin they had victories by subduing the Arab elite, conquering the Maghreb and the Taifan kingdoms that were still in Muslim hands in the Iberia Peninsula. The Almohads were more fundamentalist, since their war was wholly against those enemies and of Islam, Europeans or Jews. Often with time they relaxed their customs to win the favor of the people something that did not happen with the Almoravids. The Almohads made a series of buildings through Thut, Andalusia at, and its domains that we have today. We will separate three rocks, the Seville, Cadiz and the Cordobes. The civilian route will start in one of the capitals that the Almohads chose. The city of Seville, in Arabic, is Vilia. The city, the city has today one of the most grandiose monuments of its time, of which only a part remains, its Alhama Mosque, of which there are its minarets, the Giralda and the Sun. Ablution Yard. The Mox was built in the late 12th century, used for the entire city to come, with a brick structure and a rich decoration of poly loved arch. Its courtyard or shan use columns and recycled materials as a, the source of Visigothic origin. The door of forgiveness has a rich geometric decoration. Its minarets reach a considerable height of almost 100 meters high, which with windows of horseshoe arcs to allow light with bricks and using as a base and foundation Roman remains of italics. Since the Almohads did not carve image, they used geometric plastic decorations on the walls of the Giralda called septicas, which are displayed in the middle area of the tower. The Giralda was topped by golden balls that disappeared by a 40th century earthquake. This image today can be seen thanks to the technology of virtual reality 
treat a civilian company called Passview that you can see those who visit will and click off the link attached to the podcast. The city also conserves construction of civil and military types as in the case of the aqueduct of Richmond Toto that was of Roman origin and that was reformed of successive ways by the Almohads, allowing the city to continue receiving the water of the pipes of Carmona. The city has one of the most impressive walled enclosure, 12th century, since it has several kilometers and reached the citadel Alcazar, a type of building with a large Almohad reform, also in the 12th century, and from which we have can discover. His construction of bricks and mortar allowed to see the degree of protection of the city always at war with Christian. Another building is the castle of St. George, whose foundations we can see of Almohad origin, to avoid the incursions by the Guadalquivir River and of which numerous remains are, are conserved like yards and amphoras for water and oil. Outside the historic center and located in a modern area of the city is the Buaira Palace, named for Alagón Buaira, built for recreational use by the then Caliph Abu Yasuf Yusuf, same time as the castle of St. George. The last building of the Almohad era is the tower, the Tower of Gold, a kind of lighthouse of the 13th century, named for the golden golden tiles of his final part and which served as a watchtower before the incursion of Christian ships that threatened the city. The civilian countryside is also dot with remains of the Almohad era. The city of Carmona at 30 kilometers has of wall in the Puerta Sevilla can be seen and a citadel. If they were not genuinely Almohads, if they have reforms of them using the archlars of Little Roman and bricks of the Caliphate era. Carmona also has the remains of a mosque, especially the San Ablution Yard, whose wall we can see in the church of Santa Maria and its minaret. Marchena, another jewel of the countryside, has a wall of the 12th century, renovated to reach its citadel, where you can see the watchtower preserved in exceptional conditions and the door of the rose, which leads directly to the old Medina. The town of Boyullos de la Mitación in Aljarafe has a chapel where the patron saint of the Virgen de Guadalupe rests. This hermitage was built on a mox of Almohad origin from which today we can see its mineral almost intact and unchanged by the subsequent reforms. In Ecija, the remains of the Alcazar and Almohad walls stand out among their house which towers and albarans. The best known being Albarranilla restored and those of Calle Barrera and Quintana. The Church of Santa Cruz, with its porticot courtyard, will be built on the old main mosque. However, Another of the remains and important monuments of the Almohad periods of the city is the bridge over the river Genil. The last places are from the area of Aljarafe, 
San Juan de Aznalfarache. There are remains of the walls of the Palace Almohade, in Alfarai, where the name of the town comes from. Aznalcaza. We found fragments of a tower wall and a door which points arch curve on a Roman fortification. San Lucar la Mayor. We find the walls of the Carcava next to the church of San Pedro. In the next edition, we will continue with the road through Cadiz.